Father, we ask that the Spirit in your word will leap out from the pages of the book. We ask that there shall be an invasion of the Spirit, bringing about transformation, illumination, in the name of our Lord Jesus. Thank you, supernatural Father. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. If you are glad you enchant this morning, put those hands together for Jesus. He's worthy to be praised and adore. We can have a seat in God's presence. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Happy New Month to everybody. Turn to your neighbor and say Happy New Month. God has been faithful since the beginning of the year. It's been a roller coaster of blessings and um, such a great time to be in church once again. The ninth month of the year and of course the first day of the ninth month. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you glad you're alive? Are you glad you have the life of Jesus in you? I'm super glad. Hallelujah. All right, let's quickly open our Bibles to the book of Psalm, chapter 51. Amen. It's such a great honor to be here at Lekki Campus once again. I bring greetings from Bagada, where Jesus lives, and we share him to the world. Amen. And um, it's good to see you, Pastor Bola. It's really good to see you. Amen. Please help me appreciate all our pastors in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah, Pastor Sean. Good to see you. Amen. Hallelujah, and all our leaders, I salute you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So in the month of September, we'll be looking into breaking spiritual coldness. We'll be looking into that aspect of our lives that is, you know, um, giving all unto God. And of course, I will not go without saying um, this month is a powerful month, power-packed. And we're starting research in exactly eight days. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. For some of us, you know, uh, are happy, hallelujah, and some are not just happy, amen, praise the Lord. But whichever way, amen, that fasting, we fast it together, hallelujah. So please start it now, amen, for the days of fasting start from Monday. Let's pick Monday, so you have eight days to eat all the food, hallelujah. So research starts on the 9th of September to 29th of September, it's a fantastic time. Um, where God gave us a word that's going to be a season of prayer and breakthrough. And um, it's expected that everybody in church, outside um, the church, also participating with us fast from the 9th to 29th. Uh, we have the brochures um, available already. Our pastors have it, I, I guess. I have seen the brochure myself. And uh, from Sunday, we'll um, start giving out the brochures. There are also um, apps, research app that will be available that we can make use of. Amen. And also, uh, we have um, daily prayers. Um, by 6 o'clock to 6.15 in the morning by our pastors. Then we have evening prayers here start by 7 p.m. Amen. Hallelujah. Evening prayers start by 7 p.m. Then we have daily um, Bible study, online Bible study. It's from 2 o'clock. It's just 5 to 10 minutes, 2 o'clock on Insta Live every day. Our pastors are going to be sharing powerful word of God um, to us. It's going to be a powerful time in all our cells also. It's going to be a powerful time as we have special visitation from our pastors in our cells. Psalm, one, Psalm 51 and today I'll be talking briefly on um, brokenness or dealing with spiritual coldness. Dealing with spiritual coldness. Uh, it's a season, it's a time of the year where we want to propel and energize uh, our Christian life. And we have discovered that um, over the month, over the weeks, um, challenges of life. Life happens so much uh, that uh, we get to a place in our Christian walk uh, that we become cold. And how do we come out? Of that spiritual um, cold base there. Hallelujah. In a world full of options there, believers are beginning to, um, you know, um, experience that level of uh, dryness or drought in their spiritual life. Let's quickly go to Psalm 51 verse 17. Psalm 51 verse 17 and we'll take it up from there. Psalm 51 verse 17 scripture says, uh, the sacrifices, let's start from verse um, 16. It says, for you do not desire sacrifice or else I would have given it. You understand there? He said, you do not delight in burnt offering. He said, um, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. 
this, O oh God, you will not despise. He said that you do not desire sacrifices, you do not desire burnt offering, which means there that God is not interested in activities. You understand? If you go to the book of Isaiah chapter, 50, uh, chapter 1, he was talking about the same thing there, that they bring forth um, uh, rams, they bring forth goats, uh, they were involved with so much activities, uh, thinking that their activities will please the Lord. And the psalmist said by prophecy there, he said that you do not desire all these things, you do not desire the bond offering there. You do not deserve the sacrifices there if the heart of the man is not connected. Now, uh, Simon now said that there's these few things, these two, these two things uh, that you desire and you cannot bypass. He said the sacrifices of God is a broken spirit. Um, he said a heart, a contrite spirit. Uh, he said uh, there, he said a broken and a contrite heart you will not despise. The word despise there means you will not neglect. It means that you will not bypass. It means that uh, you will not look down upon. He said, these are the sacrifices uh, that you desire. And a Christian must always know that one of the, 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 one of the greatest factors that makes him attract the attention of God uh, is brokenness. So I'm going to define what brokenness there is quickly here. Brokenness is the state of total surrenderedness. Brokenness for a believer, spiritual brokenness is the state of total surrenderedness, is the state of total submission unto God. Brokenness is a recognition of your imperfection and your inadequacies outside the mercy and the help of God. Is someone hearing me here? Brokenness is your recognition of your inadequacies, of your imperfection outside the mercy and the help of God. That was what the, uh, the psalmist was saying. He said, these are the sacrifices that you desire, oh God. He said, the sacrifice of a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Sometimes uh, people become too mundane. They become uh, too, too used to their life. They become too, you know, too given to the challenges of their life. They have grown thick skin to, um, against the relationship that they have with God. They probably believe that they are uh, where they are because of what they have done in their life. The, the uh, epistles put it this way. He said, what have you received uh, as what do you have rather that you have not received from the Lord? A man begins to live his life as though everything that he has was as a result of his own work. Brokenness is a state of your recognition that I am imperfect without God. A man that begins to think that without God I can live my life is a dead man already. One man said, he said, I have gathered all the property. I will say unto my soul, he said, sleep and enjoy. He said, and scripture says, that night your soul shall be required of you. You saw and hear him here. That is when people begin to behave as though everything starts and ends with them. One of the ways that you know that a man is unbroken is the system of pride in a man. You see? Pride is bigger than sin in itself. As a matter of fact, the introduction of sin to the devil was pride. The devil said to himself in the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, there, he, said, he said, I will ascend unto the heavens. I will become like God. I. It was the introduction of the sin that the devil entered into. Pride is a system that a man built around himself that has an over-exaggerated, you know, Worth of himself outside the will of God. Outside the will of God. And brokenness is a system that is created to kill pride in the life of a man. Brokenness is a system of God that kills the self-sufficiency of a man. A man can lose the move of God based on pride. One day I was praying, the Lord said unto me, and he showed me two things. He said, one of them, he said, this is a major system and a demon that is, and that is crushing the move of God in people's life. And he showed it to me, and it was pride. Men who behave as though all they have is from their sweat. Pride is a system. You see, when the devil gives a man pride, he goes to sleep. Because it's a pathway to destruction. He doesn't need to monitor the man anymore. All the man needs is a seed of pride. Then the devil can go to sleep. My pastor once said unto me, 
He said, if the devil gives you a bad wife, he doesn't need to be involved in your life again. He said, he has given you the project that you know for the rest of your life. It's the same thing with pride. When the devil has successfully made a garment of pride for a man, he can go to sleep. The man is auto cruise to destruction. Is someone hearing me here? Is someone hearing me here? Pride is the language of the ungrateful, a self-exaggeration of a man's worth below the worth of God. Now, this is what pride does. Pride makes you think that you have it, but you don't have it. It's an over-exaggerated of your worth below the worth of God. But it makes you feel that it's above the worth of God. Because there is nothing a man has that God has not given unto him. There is God in every details. Is someone hearing me here? But when you see an unbroken man, it's a man that refers to everything that he has. That it belongs to him by his flesh. It's an exaggerated exaggeration of your soul. The soulish manifestation of a man. A man thinks that he has gotten a good wife because he worked for it. A man thinks that he has gotten a good life because he worked for it. Pride is the system to reduce the move of God from the life of a man. And when God is not in the life of a man, it takes no seconds for the devil. It's a time bomb. Is someone hearing me here? Every, the fan can be rotating, but the light is out. But one day the fan will stop. Is someone hearing me here? What prophecy has a man stopped from happening in his life as a result of pride? What are the things that we have lost as a result of pride? Women have lost husband as a result of pride. Is someone hearing me here? People have lost the move of God as a result of pride. The Holy Ghost is moving in a service as a result of pride. People have lost the move of the Spirit. Because they don't want the merit to be separated from the king. Is someone hear me here? So they can't lift their hands in worship. He said, I'm too, I'm too big to worship. I'm too big to lift my hands. Is someone hear me here? Pride is a system that the devil does not need to be involved with. He was the founder of it. He gives you pride, he can go sleep. A man of pride is a man that is uninterested in the worship of the supreme being called God. Uninterested. I've told myself over and over again that there are two places that you catch me crying. That a miracle beyond the calculation of men happen. And you catch me crying in his presence. You catch me crying in his presence. We grew up as men to be taught that men don't cry. Don't, 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 so as a man, we, we, we kept, you know, we, we store. We store the cries. And, and that has affected our emotions when it comes to releasing it in the presence of God. That is why you find men die early than ladies. Is someone hearing me here? Because they all of things have been bottled up, thinking that I can handle it. Meanwhile, there is a system that God has put in place. If only you can just throw it down at his presence. Scripture says that the 24 elders are the presence of the Lord. They will lay down their crowns and I will say, holy, holy, are you Lord. That 24 elders, these are men that, that enters realms and stays there perpetually. But every time they lay down their heart. These are things that are killing believers. A man cannot hear the frequency of heaven because all he knows is that I can do it. Listen to me. There are things money can do. There are things money cannot do. Money can bring his presence. Money can buy heaven in your room. <laughs> you know what I'm saying here? Money cannot bring the presence of the heavenlies in your room. It takes a man that is broken. Scripture says, a broken and a contrite heart, the Lord will not bypass. Have you ever walked beside a, a very beautiful woman before? When I say beautiful, I mean beautiful. That kind of beauty you can't bypass. When you pass, you have to stop. Brother, you know what I'm saying. Especially when you are driving and your wife is beside you. And yet, you still want to look. You now engage her. You say, honey, can't you see what I'm saying? So that both of you can see together. Hallelujah. That's the strategy. That's fair. Pastor Brother, he said, that's fair. Hallelujah. He said, the Lord cannot bypass a broken heart. He 
cannot bypass it. An unbroken man makes excuse for inadequacies. Excuse is the language of the lazy, the monument of nothingness, those who give it are not wise. Someone hearing me here? Excuses are languages of the lazy, a monument of nothingness. Those who give it are not wise. You, you cannot build everything. Except the reason why I don't worship it. You know, my, my, my gown, you know, the, the upper part, I, I can't really, you know something, I, I can't really lift it up like that, you, you know. You know we don't, I don't shout in God's presence. I, I'm gentle. <laughs> Is someone hearing me? Excuses of life. Excuses. I've lost boyfriends over and over again. I've lost. I've lost projects over and over again. They be, keep on giving excuses why we should not be broken. The Bible made mention of a woman. He said, "This king is a, a king rather." He said, "This king does not fear God, neither does he fear any man." He said, "But a woman kept on coming every day." Won't you avenge me of, of, of my prayer? Won't you avenge me of this situation? Scripture says, unless you weary me out. A broken spirit, the man could not bypass. A broken spirit. There are things that a believer will do in his presence that God cannot cover his face. He cannot cover his face. They brought the woman to Jesus in the book of John chapter 8. And the children, the woman... The woman didn't stand up saying that, you know what, I was the only one that was caught. What about the man? Sometimes it will be as though life only caught you. And, and people that did the same thing, you know, they, they, they escaped. How come it is me? Have you ever been in that situation? How come? How come? Scripture says they brought a woman that was caught in the very act of adultery. My question is, was she committing the adultery alone? A woman can commit adultery, no. There was a man there. But somewhere along the line, they, they exempted the man, but they brought the woman. The man was probably a Pharisee, a church guy. And that was why the Pharisee left him. Because they knew where they meet. My God. My, you know, we sought our home. But let, let us deal with this woman. <laughs> Someone hear me. That, that level of excuse, that level of pride. Holds a man back from encountering the Lord. Hmm. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 17. Let me show you something very quickly here. First Samuel chapter 15. And that is why in this season of fasting and prayer, this is the time to shed the weight. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 17. Very quickly. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 17. The season of research, this is the time to shed the weight of pride. Years back, I kept on praying. I still prayed the prayer. I said, Lord, whatsoever will make me big in my own eye, may I never have it. And someone said, when thou was little in thy own eyes, <laughs> was thou not made the head of the tribe of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee. When they were little in their own eyes, the days when you, you were crying unto the Lord. Can, can you please give me this husband? Can you please give me this child? Can you please give me this job? The days when you were running around, driving the street of Lagos, and seeking for that contract that, that would turn your life around. Now that you have it. Now that you have it. It came to a time, Saul said unto Samuel, he said, before you came, I offered the sacrifices. That people told me to offer the sacrifice. But there was a time, it was of a broken heart. My brother, there was a time that you were really of a broken heart. But can you check your spirit right now and check whether you are still of a broken heart? Hallelujah. How do you know when a man is unbroken? They over-prioritize popularity over trend. First Samuel chapter 15 verse 20 to 21, very quickly here. They over-prioritize popularity and trends. To be given to popularity and trends is to constantly feed your flesh. Is someone hearing me here? And someone said unto Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. And I've gone the way which the Lord sent me. And I have brought Agag and the king of Amalek. And utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Verse 21, very quickly here. He said, but the people took of the spoil. He said, sheep and oxen. The chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord. 
he was following what the people were telling him. He was following the trend. He said, don't wait for Samuel. What's this Samuel thing? He said, listen, don't listen. Just go for the worship and praise. Do all this word. I've heard the word last week. <laughs> popularity and trends. To constantly give yourself to popularity and trends is to feed your flesh. And to constantly feed your flesh is to gradually empty your secret place. Is someone hearing me here? To constantly feed your flesh, feed your soul. With trends, with popularity, what people will say, over what God will say, is to gradually empty your secret place. A man said it this way, to constantly feed your flesh is to gradually empty your destiny. To constantly feed your flesh is to gradually empty your spiritual destiny. Popularity. What will people tell me? You know, I'm the happening, I'm the happening people here. I'm the happening lady here. I'm the happening husband here. <laughs> I remember years back, there were people that were the happening family. Any other family around them, they are not boiling. That kind of family. They, they feel that they are the peak of success. They were constantly feeding their trends. Not knowing that trends go, they come and go. But the Lord abides forevermore. Yes, the Lord abides forevermore. Whatever trends right now. I, I remember in those days, when I saw my dad's picture, I mean, the trousers were baggy. You know, you know baggy picture. Very, very slim here and big down there. 1990 something. Then some five years back, the same trend came back. Did you know baggy jeans and baggy trousers? Very slim here and big here. Now it's gone. But do you know that maybe in the next 15 years you'll be back? All this slim tie that we're putting on there. Back then, my dad was putting on very slim tie. But he went and came back. But God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Today and forevermore. Whatever is communicated today, my mom was using it years back. I did they call the one you run name then. If I say now, some of us know. They look, they look like ghosts then. White substance. My mom will put it there, put everything. We saw the pictures. But it has been branded now, Medicaid. Zaron. <laughs> and because of this. Man made things. Man have decided to hold back the brokenness in his presence. Of a priority of their trends. So what are the benefits? Listen to me. Repentance is not equal to brokenness. Brokenness is deeper than repentance. Is someone hearing me here? Brokenness is an acknowledgement of your inadequacies. Without the mercy of God. <laughs> so I said unto Samuel, he said, but I beseech you, don't let the people know of my wrongs. He, he, he felt that he was repentant because you can fake repentance, but you can't fake brokenness. You can't fake brokenness. A contrite spirit is of the heart. It, it's a surgical operation in your heart. That I'm nothing without God. Whether I am worth dollars of, I mean, billions of dollars. Listen to me. I have come to discover in the place of prayer, in the few works that I've done, that prayer reduces, or prosperity rather, reduces your prayer points. But it increases your prayer life. Is someone here? Yeah. Prosperity reduces your prayer point. You don't need to pray about God. You don't need to pray about house. But it increases your prayer life. Because you know that all that you have is from him. Kainima Saba. All that I have is from him. He reduces all my, all my shame, he reduces it. But my love for him, it increases it. Because I'm nothing without him. I'm worthless without him. That's the language of the broken people. I'm worthless without you, oh God. I can do nothing without you. May my son and my daughters wake up to see a broken daddy that lies down in the room crying before the Yahweh and the room can be saturated. Those are the children that we can raise in our days. A broken and a contrite heart, the Lord will not bypass. He said he will pull down the proud and exalt the humble. Those who tremble at his word. Is someone hearing me here? 
So why should that be broken? Spiritual brokenness enables spiritual growth. Brokenness facilitates your spiritual growth. This is the best way to grow in the Lord. Always knowing that the more you know him, the more you want to know him. Years back I was praying. God said, I can never feel you to an extent where you don't feel hungry again. He said, my infilling of my power, he said, the outpouring of my power, the more you are filled, the more you are hungry. Listen, brother, if you've ever feel that you have been filled with the Lord and you are not hungry, it is not the feeling of the Lord. If you ever think that you have received from church on a Sunday and you feel that you are totally okay, it is not the feeling of the Lord because its feeling comes with a level of emptiness to seek him the more. Yes. The more you worship and see him, the more you want to see him. It facilitates your spiritual growth. It facilitates your walk with him. If you are not yearning to walk with him, then it means that you are not broken to see him. Listen to me. For every broken vessel, there is always a mending oil. There is always a mending oil. If you ever walk into a kitchen and you see your mug shattered, broken, what will happen to you? You will feel so, you feel the need to bring it together again. If you have the, if you have the, if you have the, the if you have the equipment to bring it together, you will quickly run to the glue and everything, especially when it's a very precious one. You will get the glue, you will get everything to mend it together. And so is the spirit of a man. When a man is vulnerable, malleable, there is a need of the spirit to bring you together. So every time that you appear before him, you appear in wholeness. Sometimes life challenges. Life can make us of a, of, of a cold heart. Emotional tortures and pain. These are things that have sent people to the laps of Delilah. Sometimes I... I, I, I really feel that uh, it is not because I want to be unbroken. It's just because life happened. Uh, Pastor Binga, I, I, I didn't plan to be unresponsive to the Holy Spirit. I didn't plan it. Mephibosheth didn't plan to be lame in his feet. Life just happened. His grandfather Saul, this same man, well, was a man that, you know, he was, he was shoulder high above his mate in his days. As the man of our scripture says, when you look at Saul, he was a man of beauty. He was a man of stature. He was the most handsome of all the guys in the village in those days. So anything that came from Saul should be of the same replica. But something happened along the way when they were running with Mithibosheth. Scripture says that he fell. And from that day he became lame. I know that some of us today is not because we plan to be disobedient. It's just because life happened. Pastor Winger, you don't know what I faced. If you actually went through what I've gone through in life, you will know that it's difficult for me to break down before him. Because what, what, what was the Lord looking at when I was raped? That was the question I, that's the question I get almost every week. What was the Lord looking at when I lost my job? What was he looking at when, when everybody turned against me? What was the Lord looking at? Listen to me. But it takes brokenness. Because life can happen. But yet we have the life of God. That can turn every situation around. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours. I'm yours. I'm yours. My life is yours. Is yours. Is yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. That's my prayer this morning. I don't know if there are people in here this morning. You have held back many things in your heart. You try to run, but there is no speed, there is no strength to run. You try to get back your walk with the Lord, but there is no strength. You are, you are totally devastated. And therefore you have built up an edge around you, you have built up a system around you that despite the knockings of the spirits, you, you cannot delve into the workings of God in your life. 
Sometimes it's because you have not really found him. You have not really experienced and encounter him. But he sent me here this morning while praying to tell you that if you can just give him everything, if you can just say, Lord, break me. Remold me for your use. Lord, let my walk with you not be mundane, let not be ordinary. But Father, break me this morning. And that is your song this morning. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. My life is yours. I give you 30 more seconds, pray and say, Lord, help me. Break me, Lord, break me, Lord. Lord, I know my emotions are just hard right now. Very, very difficult to penetrate. But Lord, give me a new heart, renew a right spirit inside of me. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. pray for people here this morning and say Lord this is September I don't want to hold back again I want to love you more and more I want to give you everything I want to, it's not like you are dedicating your life to Christ but you just want to release it all. I said Lord I've passed through fire, I've passed through water I've been through a lot of things in my heart and in my life but Lord I ask this morning that you break me for your own use. Lord break me down that you might remove me again Lord, I'm tired of living my life on my own. But break me that you might remove me again. Just put your right hand on your chest. I said, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. I receive the oil for every mending of every, every chattered heart. Every hard heart. I receive a new heart. A contrite heart. A broken heart. That is released my label unto you. Kenini kaiba sunemba la mansa glemakai. Edeba la barus belebrena gashkata. Yours forever, Kana Mashana.